Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tap Calf Transmissions. I am one of your hosts, Justin, joined by my friend and your second host, Corey. Co-host hello, is Corey. what would people usually say there. God damn it. It's already started. Second uh, host. <sighs> hello, guys. I'm second host, Corey. Uh, thanks for having me here. Do you want to just take over? Like No. Well, right. as, as it's not taking over as second host, we're sharing we're sharing duties as first and second host. Yeah, but when I say it first and second, it preference uh, preferences me over you, which is really what I was going for. I thought that was just accidental. No, oh god, no. Oh, no, damn it! I'm glad. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to another episode of Tap Calf Transmissions, the as of now Star Wars Legends Book Club podcast. That we do every two weeks, um, or in the case of Dark Empire, uh, one a three week break, Dark Empire two, no break, and Dark Empire or sorry Empire's End, the final uh, book, I guess, comic the, book, the final arc. two issues of the fourteen yeah. issue saga that is Dark <laughs> Empire. I I call it all Dark Empire. Yeah, me so too. I'm, it's been made especially confusing because there's the new Empire's End in canon as well, yeah. which was... Um, Chuck Wendig, I think? Yeah, Chuck Wendig, part three of Aftermath. Um, and it's also like the the bookend of the trilogy, so it's a little... Uh, it got a little confusing. So I usually just call it Dark Empire 3, but there's always somebody in the comments like, actually, it's called Empire's End, as if I haven't read this goddamn... <laughs> two issue comic a million times it sounds like they're trying the to empires end your whole career i'm trying to empires end this intro let's let's get on with things um so today we are covering <laughs> um <laughs> empires and uh, we need this to be a continuing joke on the yeah um should we get right into it or do you want to do you want to talk about life the universe uh no so uh, for those who listened to the last episode my voice is back so oh, yeah. uh, that that's something that's changed. But mm. uh, we've got Clone Wars coming in about five or six hours, I think. The first oh, episode will be available. I think so. I'm not 100% sure on that. the same thing as The Mandalorian, I guess? I, that, is, that was my understanding. Oh, uh, sweet. Yeah. So I, we're, we were talking about doing some sort of uh, retrospective and then... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're doing that too. But for the podcast, for the podcast oh, yeah, listeners... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were talking about doing some sort of retrospective on the previous six seasons. Uh, we haven't mm. figured out the details on that yet, so we'll have more information for you guys when we have right. uh, when we have that ourselves. But we'll probably also talk a little bit about season seven as yeah. that airs and as we yeah. go through. It could be the a next fun stuff. thing to talk about every the beginning of every episode, and yeah. maybe have an episode or two dedicated to it. How uh, how's your rewatch gone so far? Because last time we talked, I think you said you were. Midway through season three, I think. I'm not much farther than I was at that point. Okay. Uh, so, so you're a loser. Yeah. yeah. No, that's okay, that's what cool. that was. Okay. I was really hoping to get through the entire thing before season seven started. And it was like, okay, I, if I just watch a season per day, I can make it. And then <laughs> I didn't watch a day. season per day. Well, the last <laughs> season is only 13 episodes. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's where I am. I'm at, I think, let me just check. I'm at, I think, the last three episodes of season six. Um, I just finished the, I finished the arc with um, Rush. I finished the arc with the uh, disappearing, um, where all those people get uh, kidnapped by like mm. Mother Talzin, which is kind of weird. Uh, I think so. I've got like five episodes left or three episodes left somewhere between there maybe four mm. um but yeah that's so I'm, I'm looking forward to it and the good thing is everything that's left i can kind of it's not really relevant to what will be uh what will be coming up in season seven so i'm excited um, yeah i, I kind of know how the how the war ends so i'm not super worried and i have, i know how it all went wait how do you know that uh there was actually uh like a fan film that came out at one point What's it yeah. called? I think it's called like Return of the Sith or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Revenge yeah, yeah. of the Jedi. I mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think I heard of that one. Um But that that's kind of the nice thing about the Clone Wars though, and we'll move on in a second, 
it is so arc based like as long as you kind of know there are a few main arcs like the 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 mall stuff the mandalore stuff really like as long as you know those you can kind of jump in at pretty much any point like it helps if you know how, like about the clones and stuff but um really as long as you kind of understand what's going on you can really jump I'd, in at any point so I, I, i'm sure you can hear that i don't know what that is I don't know i'm you... getting attacked by a helicopter or something oh, okay cool but uh five star wanted level yeah, I, I, I used a cheat code to spawn in a tank and flew around in the city with it earlier. So that's probably oh, yeah. going to be on the news. But... Is that why all the trains have stopped everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not get political. And let's uh, let's get into the uh, Dark Empire. We'll, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll start with Dark Empire 1. And the first thing that I noticed besides the opening crawl is we get one of the ugliest panels we've gotten in all of this entire comic series so far uh because we moved from artists we no longer have cam kennedy we now have uh bakey i don't i don't actually know what his first name is bikey jim bikey jim bikey um oh yeah there it is uh so a significant style change because dark empire one and two is it's not it's, it's good art but it's very very heavily stylized lots of purples lots of like it, Dark Empire One, especially, it reflects the um, it reflects the tone of the comics quite well, and I feel like he kind of tried to emulate that with this, but the actual quality of the illustrations is just nowhere near. Yeah. Um, the faces are the, the characters are fine, but just like if you look at like the temple on the the first page. It's just really not there. I Everything's actually kind of like sort of... the characters of it better for the most part, the Rebels especially, because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I had a huge issue with how Luke looked in Dark Empire 1. I think he actually mm -hmm. looks much better now. Uh, yeah, still kind of David Bowie, but yep. uh, better than Dark Empire 1. So yeah. I'm not going to complain about that too much. Luke wishes he had the pure, raw sexuality of David Bowie. Hmm. Just saying. I mean... Look at what happened with Jem. Clearly, he does have it. I guess, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. The characters look good. The thing that bothers me is everything's got a sort of like... It's hard to explain. Like, a very... It's almost like everything here is like a first... Like, it was like a first pass. Yeah. It's kind of like fuzzy and very rushed looking. Um just very basic illustrations um so especially like with dark empire one which i think we liked i mean i can say that we like that quite a bit more than dark empire two i would even say that i quite enjoy dark empire yeah, me too. um and but with this like the the art is really really holds it back um but anyways they start off on osis uh we get the in Dark Empire 2, we have Luke and Cam Sully go to Osis. He meets these people, the Asana. Um, he takes two of their children. They're basically like, I don't know if we should do this. And Cam Sully is like, trust me, you guys won't regret it. And like the first five panels are basically like, we regret this. Regret. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it literally says, uh, I fear we made a grave error. When it's like, you guys didn't even have a choice. Luke just snatched those children. Yeah, Luke wasn't even thinking about, uh, like, asking anyone or letting anyone know. He just saw some kids tied to a tree and was like, yes, <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I will take these children. <laughs> Cam, it's a sign from the gods. No, it's some kids tied to a tree. It's a sign from the gods. Yeah. This was Luke when he was still in his incel uh, phase, so we can't really blame him. Uh, Mara would straighten him out, but not till later. <laughs> well, not even Mara. Um, we get, Callista. We get yeah, Callista does a pretty good job. Um, anyway, so, yeah, shit's not going well for anybody right now. The Asana, not only have they lost two of the most powerful children, um, but in Dark Empire 2, the Empire was also led to the planet, and they are going to get some... Uh, some retribution in this issue as well. So people being all going to get captured. Yeah. 
Sorry if I spoiled that for anyone. Uh, it's okay. But we go from from the scene with the Asana thinking, hey, we done fucked up, into deep space with a rebel ship <laughs> uh, with some modern tanks in it. Yeah. I They're don't just like, like straight up tanks. <laughs> um. I like I actually like the design of the ship. I think it's cool as like a big freighter, I guess, and a carrier. Um, the feet are weird to me. The feet are weird, but it's supposed to be like a troop ship, right? So I guess yeah, it's literally landing on planets at some points. There's also um, the thing of like the there's the engines and then the hangars directly between the engines. It seems like you'd right. probably get burnt up in the engine right ness. That's a good point. <laughs> It's probably not the ideal location for an engine. You would imagine like, there's some like reactor stuff going on, but I don't know. There's other panels in this uh, comic that show X-Wings like parked on the top of ships, mm-hmm. like an aircraft carrier. And I think in space, that whole idea might be a little problematic. <laughs> well, yeah, the whole city, uh, the whole Nespis city is kind of that idea. And then you do have the aircraft carrier in space in Mm -hmm. i think that might actually be empire zen 2 yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that is it's when the fleet's like rendezvousing before the big battle um but here we get to see i guess not the first because we do get to see the galaxy gun in dark empire 2 but here we get to see another shot of the galaxy gun um because i guess the destruction actually happens off screen right in dark empire 2 uh the destruction of what of the rebel base on um oh what's it called the planet they were (laughs) i don't i don't know i don't think it happens off screen the evacuation happens off screen and then we see a bit of the explosion i think and it's like focusing oh yeah you're right it's like oh my god all of our friends are on that planet right narrator and they're like but they weren't yeah um the funny thing is i because i listened to the audio production for this one as well of course and for one Han Solo sounds remarkably like Mark from the Templin Institute doing like an <laughs> old timey accent and it like like remarkably like that and it really really throws me off R- like remarkably I, I, like that oh god <laughs> I, I like it even less now but uh you can find the the audio productions on YouTube and be curious to hear what you guys think um but yeah one thing that's funny is when the the missiles coming out of hyperspace they say oh it's it's got a shield rating of, and they use the old, what is it, SDU, I think, the ones that the, uh, like the... West End Games or... Yeah, X-Men. the WEG um, shield rating, and I just thought that was kind of funny, because, like, the audio productions kind of go to their way to be like, hey, we've read other Star Wars books. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, yeah, that, that's just one thing. I was like, that's a really random thing to throw in there, but I'm sure there's, like, a lot of people who appreciated it at the time. <laughs> I'm sure there's like other fighters that are uh, from the Pelagia here that are attacking the missile, but I, I do like the visual of like two X wings shooting their little fire lasers at the missile and be like, "Nothing's getting through!" Oh my <laughs> god, how insanely powerful is this? It's like in um, the Simpsons, whereas I think it's Ned's parents they, when they're hippies and like we've tried we've every, tried we've nothing, tried nothing. We're all out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But this is kind of the the thing about Dark Empire. The the Imperials get technology that's just like leagues and leagues ahead of everything else in the galaxy. Like as we see later on, the Empire or sorry, the when they fire the other missile, the New Republic has their new advanced ion cannons, and those don't even get halfway through the shields. Um, so that's kind of like a little problem with this. It it has a power scaling issues mm-hmm. um, that are kind of forgotten about because it just. Like, oh, are, well, are you saying that the Empire's 17 super weapons were too many in this? Just to... Well, they should have had weaker shields, and it would have been okay, fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it does say, too, that the, the great ship's defense cannons, so... I guess the ship was firing on it, but... Yeah, and all, you can see, could... like, proton torpedoes and stuff coming from other angles. It's just I I was enjoying the visual just of, being, like, the two just being fighters. being a snarky little... Yeah, I was being a, a snarky little incel. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> The troop ship is destroyed. A hundred thousand good men go down with the ship, uh, which seems like a lot. 
that's a that's a lot of boys down at once. They they uh, claim that in the book, but like there's fifty thousand people on uh, an ISD just as crew, so mm-hmm. or thirty six thousand. There's some amount in between there. So mm-hmm. like a troop carrier that is just carrying troops, it it seems like a reasonable amount, not like a huge. Oh no, I agree. It is reasonable. I just mean that's like. And Palpatine's just sitting there like. Oh Fuck yeah! Got him. Fuck. He's like, did you just see that boy? <laughs> yeah, just heavy panting. Fire another one. <laughs> so there's nothing there. I don't care. <laughs> fire a missile so we can fire a missile at the missile. <laughs> um, one thing that's interesting too is both the prologue and some of the conversation here kind of refers to other planets being destroyed. Why not Moncala? Why- uh. It it ref, it refers to planets capitulating, but they still say it's only been fired four times, hmm. and I think we've seen all of them so far, or we might have just seen two. Like we know Desucha, we know Pelagi, uh, we know the Bellagio has been destroyed. <laughs> uh, Pelag- I, Pelagia, it's the Pelagia. Mm-hmm. The Pelagia. Uh, <laughs> and I think the previous two were in Dark Empire two. Uh, as well so we i think we have seen all of them but the whole thing is just like oh we barely done anything and everyone's getting all all upset so we mm-hmm. were winning so i don't think there's i don't know what their capacity is to make the missiles or how many right. they've planned to fire but they're they're really just hunting down that rebel leadership and yeah mon calamari would probably be a good target for that especially after they failed with the world devastators they make an example mm-hmm. out of that but then how are they supposed to steal them to build ships? It's so. it's kind of weird, too, that this was like a, a sort of this storyline of like a hastily constructed super laser. We kind of or a super weapon is something we see in like Dark Saber as well. Yeah, um, I don't remember which species it is in that, uh, but it's basically Bevel Emelisk takes the place of uh, what's his name here? Uh, Keth or what's the? Ooh, the Imperial uh or girl Mergle. Um That that's it, I think. <laughs> Fuck. Alright, we'll leave it at that. But, uh, I'm but gonna yeah, be it's... honest, I did not like this. So I I did not commit a lot of the details of character names to memory. Mm-hmm. It's Leth, it's something. Anyway. Umal. It, 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 it's 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 basically a, a similar story with the designer has this plan. It's not being constructed. I mean, for some reason, the plan is not being executed properly. And then at the Empire's moment of triumph, it fails. And the designer gets punished. Uh, unfortunately, unlike Darksaber, this does not have Luke going back to Hoth to fight the Wampa that he cut the arm off of. So I think it's safe to say that this is a vastly inferior story. <laughs> That uh, does actually happen for anyone wondering. It he had to go back and face his fears, but like mm-hmm. the the core of my issues with these issues mm-hmm. is that like I enjoyed Dark Empire one. I I don't inherently dislike the idea of Palpatine coming back, and Palpatine and that did like uh, did some cool stuff. There was like mm-hmm. the one scene where he was just kind of play himself up as this weak old man to Leia, but like other than that, he was kind of wreck and stuff and then he dies and dark empire one could have been a great self-contained story yeah Uh, i'd be looking back fondly as we were two episodes into our read through of jedi academy instead dark empire two came out and was like what if we did everything we just did worse and (laughs) draw it out for another two issues where we're all we're gonna do is they they do give birth to anakin so that is one thing they do but yeah they also just kill off every other character they've introduced and make Vim and Dabota disappear. Yeah. So I I don't know that anything really survives from Dark Empire 2 or Empire's End. Yeah, I mean, funny, one thing that survives... Well, the only things that, that survive are ones that like appear also in um, Tales of the Jedi. Yeah. Um, like, Onderon. It's kind of funny. Yeah, some of the planets get mentioned again. Yeah, and, and like Onderon in the Clone Wars, um, and Onderon is in the Clone Wars in that that uh, whole arc with uh, Saw Gerrera, um, and they even visit the same city, Isis, um, but 
Andron also appeared in Tales of the Jedi. So, mm-hmm. but it, it's interesting because the portrayal is almost the exact same. Um, they've got the flying beast they ride. They've got similar looking kind of environments, similar looking cities. So anything that, and we do see like the kind of, there's more integration with Tales of the Jedi than I kind of remembered. Things like battle meditation, we get lots of mention of like Sith Wars and stuff. So that's kind of yeah. cool. But you're right. Other than that, like well, there's n- like locations. Yes. Characters. No. And the, like the mm-hmm. overall impact of the story, is just repeating the previous story immediately. And yeah. it just like you, Osis, we see a lot, uh, but I don't know that Yazana really come up in anything else that mentions Osis mm, later on. I other like tales, so. I think they come up in. Well, they don't because they kind of came from that, but like you, you yeah. see where they came from a bit more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. And like I in mean, this, I mean, Palpatine is just throughout Dark Empire two and Dark Empire three. It's just Palpatine like weakly fumbling around trying to get a body that he fails to get. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that sort of set themselves off, and it's like, okay, where are they going to take this? And then the next page, they just paid off by saying, actually, it wasn't that way. Mm-hmm. Like uh, towards the end of Empire's End two, uh, when Rafe just gets killed, and Luke is like, oh. Uh, Rafe's dead. Brand has blown himself up. All the Jedi I was training are dead, which is a theme we've noticed throughout all of mm-hmm. what we've read so far. Luke does not have a great track record as a teacher, and I think in I Jedi we're going to get a conversation with Corin about that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. uh, then he's like, "Oh, well, Cam's up there fighting. I hope he's going to be okay." It's like, <laughs> and he was. It's like, oh, well, thanks for the suspense there. And yeah. then they have the thing when they're flying into uh, Bast Castle where they're in two ships separately. And we don't see yeah. when they switch over. It's like, oh, no, the door's up. And then you see Cam's fighter fly into the door. It's like, sure is a good thing you were over here and that works. It's like, what the, f- <laughs> what the fuck? This is the cheapest payoff I've ever seen. You're making yeah. us feel suspense for something that you like it. it I, don't, I don't I don't know. I just don't understand what they were trying to do with this. Well, Dark Empire 2 feels rushed, but Empire's End feels like beyond rushed. Yeah. And when we get to the ending, we'll talk about that because the ending is bizarre. Um, but you're right. There's there's nothing that's really set up um, beyond a couple of pages in. There's no real plot lines beyond like Palpatine going for the children, which is kind of like what's been his plan the entire time. So it is kind of an unnecessary addition. If they wanted to bring back Palpatine again after what happened in Empire's End, then they should have either condensed it into one, you know, one Dark Empire two, or they should have actually had more of a story because this does kind of just come off a bit like a cash grab. Yeah. Well, even if like there are parts of the story that are interesting, like. The Palpatine yeah, stuff sure. could be interesting. It's just they have so little time to focus on him that we only see the parts mm-hmm. of it where it's like, remember you're collapsing, remember you're collab, remember you're collab, and none of him really doing anything. Whereas yeah. I think if you just cut some of the stuff with the Azana, uh, especially going to rescue them in the Bass Castle stuff, then you could mm-hmm. focus a bit more on some of those major threads and get rid of some of the moments I thought were cheaper. And this would probably be something that like, Mm. like, because there are moments I really do enjoy. It's just, there's so much of the other stuff where it's like, really? Yeah. It's also like how they just decide to remove the lightning gun from the last, yeah. From last issue. (laughs) And it's like, yeah, but it's like the missiles probably could have done that too. Like, I don't know. There's just, like you said, not a lot of payoff. Like it's, they could have cut all of the Boba Fett stuff out from last issue. Um, and then, you know, maybe they could have combined it all into just one Dark Empire 2 or something like that. Um, but yeah. So anyway, we get to the new base, which is on... Uh, I used to call it Nespus 7. I thought it was Nespus 7, but it's actually Nespus 8, um, which is basically this old spaceport. That's kind of a cool idea. Um, it's been around forever. It's kind of like a big, sort of like a, it, it's kind of junky, but it's, you know, it's still very functional. It's been around for thousands of years, basically. Uh, and Palpatine says, nah, dog, I don't like that being there. And he decides to, well, f- first of all, there's a, 
um, a rebel spy, or sorry, an imperial spy infiltrates the uh, the rebellion. It's actually someone that Han knows. Jenks was seen the other issues. I don't think so. I think he was another character that's like, here's this mm-hmm. introduction. Of Not him. Jenks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the classic trio of Han, Leia, and Jenks. Well, Luke is on. Crazy they didn't give Jenks a medal in episode four. <laughs> so, uh, it's actually the special edition, like the special special editions. Mm-hmm. You can see him. And I just like how how uh, Mon Moth, I think it's Mon Moth, was just like, bad news. They just killed 100,000 of our best troops. Everyone just moves on from it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like, that could have been Wedge. Like, no one knows. They but, killed uh, 100,000 of our best troops. And this man betrayed <laughs> <laughs> Also, Mon Mothma looks still a lot like Luke. <laughs> yeah, she's the much better Luke model here. There's a... And Luke... I do see the David Bowie, especially with the collar. <laughs> yeah, it that is 100% David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. Um, maybe that was like maybe they were covering if for an eventual like uh, I don't know music video or something, the Dark Empire music video. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, in Corey's favorite moment of the comic, the missile is shot towards uh, Nepsis because of the spy who placed a tracking beacon um, on the Millennium Falcon. It is being shot by all the newest ion cannons of the Alliance, and it just fails. It, it hits the space station. Um, Han and Leia don't get the kids to the Falcon in time, which must have been incredibly terrifying, um, but it just doesn't explode. It was just faulty. It goes through and hits a Mont Calamari cruiser or something. It just Yeah, it's just wedged in the side of an MC-90 that's just parked there. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, and it's like it's not even like that wedge in it's only like like they can probably pry it off pretty quickly <laughs> like no it's thing. inside i think it makes it all the way through i'm not sure if that uh no no okay that is the back never mind yeah it's, it's just kind of weird because the other scenes have like a plume of smoke over it yeah yeah i didn't mm-hmm. notice the the nub was part of the back until mm-hmm. i compared the fins but yeah you can even see the faulty bonadan timer if you look really closely Maybe it was sabotage. Could be. That would be an interesting story. Maybe the, for once the rebels managed to infiltrate the Empire. No. No, probably not. They're too busy um, with their aircraft carriers. But like, also, if I was Palpatine and I saw literally everybody in the Alliance, I would probably just fire two missiles right away. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's because sitting there watching on his like, whole wall TV. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, whoa. Arm another one now. Just do the two to begin with. You're, it's, it's also in the budget. kind of. It's a little. It's in the budget. It is a little lame too because the whole idea at the end of Dark Empire Two is they have Dasucha blown up and they're like, okay, we've got to spread thin. Like we can't be in one place anymore. We tried that. It didn't work. What's our next plan? Okay, everyone meet on the <laughs> space station that doesn't actually move. And it's like, okay, yes. You know, the Empire didn't make a good move by getting somebody on the Falcon and whatnot, but it could have also... There's, like, when you've got that many people on a space station, there's so many things that can go wrong, you know? Like, one person can decide it's probably not worth dying and just be like... <laughs> I just saw that you put on the stream. <laughs> oh, all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, photos of the art. <laughs> he has touched me, you know? <laughs> It's funny because there are scenes where I, I, I look at Vima and I think it's Palpatine. Yeah, um, no, I, I can see that. Because <laughs> I was rereading it and there's a scene where like she shows up in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon or something. I was like, holy shit, is that really how Palpatine finds them again? <laughs> she, she just <laughs> it. it's like, Surprise, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, but not quite. Uh, anyway, so, so they make the smart move after that and they do spread across the galaxy. Um almost obliterated by the massive blast wave that follows um but not um palpatine gives left a few days he's like bro you got three days to fix this which to be honest i thought was pretty generous usually palpatine's like fix like you didn't fix it so you're dead but he's like he gives him three days um 
Which is, yeah, it, it's definitely more than than usual, I would say. Yeah, so we're getting some character growth from Palpatine. But I, I like that he has his, uh, like, his wellness guru in the office with him. <laughs> He's like, bro, chill. He's like, no one's going to respect you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take it easy. The heart medication is... <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd like I I'd like if Palpatine's like clone wasn't deteriorating like much faster. It was like it's just like the difference of like him living to be like seventy three and seventy four. <laughs> this doctor's just really caring. He's <laughs> like, honey, we we need you to live as long as you can. <laughs> We've had some noise complaints from the neighbors, and they're just upset with all the shouting. So we need to chill. Let's take a seat by the fountain in mindfulness. <laughs> This. Can you imagine having to tell Palpatine to chill out? Yeah, I'm surprised this guy doesn't get killed. Yeah, it's like he one occasion he just comes up and stabs Palpatine in the neck with something too. Yeah, it was like some sort of steroid or something. <laughs> one thing I just imagine though, I don't know if you've seen the Democratic primary this year, but like all of the, uh, well, like a lot of the candidates are really fucking old. Like Bernie Sanders is like, well, like seventy three, seventy four. Elizabeth Warren's 70. I think Joe Biden must be in his 70s. I wonder if like they all have helpers just like, you don't got long left. We need you to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Donald Trump. He's pretty old and eating a lot of cheeseburgers. So like, there's got to be people like just following them around like, you can't get angry. You can't get angry. It's not good for you. We've got no clones left. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually all just this guy. Yeah. <laughs> If you watch closely during the debates, you can see like the little green hat running between all of them. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Old people. Um, <laughs> what can you do? Uh, <laughs> so there's actually a, a cut scene where uh, Palpatine is telling Umak to, to fix this stuff. And he just says, OK, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Palpatine's like beyond boomer. But he's like a. <laughs> What's what's the generation? The lost the generation. Greatest generation. The greatest the generation. Lost. The lost generation before that. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's old, and in Legends, it seems like he's kind of this version of Palpatine has been around for maybe even longer because he's died multiple times. Yeah, um, he's kind of more like a malevolent, like like almost like an entity, even than like a, a an actual being. If that makes sense. Well, I think all all beings are entities, but not all entities are beings. Mm, I don't know. I'm not here for philosophy check. Emperor but... Palpatine does not relish the prospect of death without reincarnation. <laughs> hmm. He looks like a like a '90s cartoon villain about to be foiled by Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, I do not well, relish then... these mystery machines. <laughs> I love the prepare my flagship look too. And you're just like, nah. <laughs> uh, he actually is, looks is... like a lot like Joe Biden in the bottom right of that page. He does, yeah. No, he does. Um, Coincidence? <laughs> you decide. <laughs> this isn't a political statement, but uh, sick Palpatine looks a lot like Joe Biden. And you guys should probably talk about that. <laughs> just a little, a lot more hair gel going on here. I think. Is that hair or yeah. is that just a wrinkle? I was wondering that too. I think his hair is like slicked back. So he mm. looks like looks like cool Joe Biden. So he's probably in his like 50s here, I think. 50s or 60s maybe. Yeah. No, no, he's he's definitely 60s or 70s. I'm trying to figure yeah. out how how much he's aging. His teeth look really good. Uh, no they don't actually. Wait, are we talking about Joe Biden or Joe Biden's teeth? I'm sure look good. Not Palpatine. Well, I don't know. Look at the page where the clips is. Look at the pictures that you put on the stream. Okay, yeah, but he's older there. Two of them are fused. Yeah, but he's older in those ones. He's... By three pages. But he gets angrier. Have you not been paying attention? He gets angrier and it makes him age quicker. No, he gets angrier and it gives him hypertension. All right, so we get the eclipse to your lawyer, not a doctor. <laughs> he does have really right nice now. teeth on the next page, but I yes, think that's just that's because I mean. it wasn't wasn't drawn properly. Uh, okay. They they really lost out on the teeth detail. Funny how when it proves my point, he's not drawn properly. But okay. it's artist it's artist interpretation. All right, 
All right. So we get the Eclipse 2, first shot of it. What do you think? Uh, I I like the Eclipse 2 more than the Eclipse 1 sometimes. The engines are much better. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is another Way thing better. where it's like, we're just going to do the exact same thing where we blew up the last one for no reason. And guess yeah. what happens to this one? They blow it up using the exact same way that R2 blew up the other one. So... Well, the first one's kind of blown up by Palpatine. Or no, that sorry, that R two took down the world devastators, and they literally just yeah. say, "Oh, we're going to destroy them the same way we took down the world devastators." Like, yeah, yeah, we this created an like... unauthorized access hatch by fucking fusion cutting our way through the back panel on this. That's not how that works. You can't just install <laughs> your USB port right there and be like, "Yeah, oh, <laughs> fucking hack that super weapon." What do they call it in um, Fallen Order again? The uh... The upgrade you get for the droid. I don't remember. But anyway, R2 got that. The if he hadn't... Go, yeah, the... Uh, if R2 hadn't got that, then he wouldn't have been able to, to, to destroy it. Mm. So he's lucky. The scomp link, right? He's lucky that he wouldn't have... That they spent some extra time bumming around. Um, because if not, it would have been the end of the galaxy. Uh, yeah, I do like the engines on the Eclipse 2 a lot more. Because like there's three on the Eclipse 1. And it looks kind of fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, the the Eclipse 1 engines are tiny as fuck. Yeah. Uh, these look more reasonable for it. But mm -hmm. I also like the more substantial tower at the front. So overall, yeah, I, like I think the, I do like the Eclipse it, 2 more than the Eclipse 1. The Eclipse 1 has like a sort of organic look to it. Yeah. Um, and the Eclipse 2 has like very distinct. You're right. It's got like a very distinct, um, I guess, like. Yeah, structure at the front. Um, it's less like a, the Eclipse One almost looks like sort of cathedrally sometimes, um, mm. especially in like some of the cover art. Yeah, just random like, yeah. Anyway, um, also kind of weird that we don't get any of the smugglers in this. I just realized. Yeah, uh, Sala and them. I think they they played their part. We needed room to to talk about the Asana more. So. Yeah. Which I actually kind of like Sala, so I would have liked to at least have her like show up for the final battle and do yeah, something. I don't mind Sala. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so the they're I guess what's next? The fleets together. Um, the rebel leaders are hunted prey, so each other moments known as to being fired upon. They're trying to figure out the next. Uh, oh, right, it's like. They're deciding what to do. Should they go to Osis, which I think is a bad plank, considering the Empire knows where that is. Um, they're basically splitting up. Uh, Luke and everyone heads to Osis and finds out that things have gone way worse, and basically everyone has been kidnapped uh, by the Darksiders. So I don't think the plan to go to Osis would actually be that bad, because they're less concerned about uh, can getting into a conventional battle and more concerned about uh not being blown up so they're basically trying to weigh uh mm -hmm. getting into a direct fight versus getting just blown up because they're definitely going to find them uh mm -hmm. so i i can see the logic behind using osis okay. uh i in their situation it's a tough situation if they are mm -hmm. going to centralize in any way which they shouldn't uh, i mm -hmm. do think somewhere like osis where uh, they can have more of a reason to think the Empire isn't going to blow it up or wants to mm -hmm. not blow it up. Uh, there, there's fair. a logic to that that is understandable, even if they really shouldn't be in the same place in any way. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I just would assume that Palpatine would be, you know, kind of. I I would just hide it on like a rock somewhere, but that's just me. Um. I think Osis qualifies as a rock at this point. It's not... Like a, a secret rock. Ooh, a secret rock. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get to uh, Dejun, or Vajun, sorry. Um, Vader's old fortress. And it's just a really pointless scene because it's like, okay, there's this conflict set up and it's settled within the same issue. And it doesn't really have a payoff. Besides, we get a bunch of... Really, just nameless Darksiders killed and uh, Nist is captured. We see uh, what's his name, Jem, uh, kick a lot of ass. Uh, he kills a few Darksiders. We see um, Impatajeo's brand do the same and kill some stormtroopers. But we get that weird scene where they're they're like, Shh, "Let's show them our defenses, but let them get in here." And yeah, 
Yeah, I didn't really understand the whole the reasoning for going there in the first like why did he he needed them for his clones, but then it like we mm-hmm. don't find out he needed them for the clones until that point where they're yeah. already almost free. It's like just don't introduce that. We don't we don't need that. It's kind of weird too that like there's gotta be other ways for Palpatine. Like Palpatine's got dark side. Why can't he just because the lore has it that Palpatine for a while possessed the body of one of his servants after dying. Um, I don't understand why he couldn't just possess another force, forceful being, um, like other than like Anakin, even if only temporarily. Um, yeah, I think he was concerned about holding on to them for as long because mm-hmm. it he wanted Anakin for sure. Yeah, but it needed to be like. 12 years so he thought he'd may as well just grow up in him i guess but mm-hmm. like yeah just take over zecker nist or something yeah and don't send them off to die to to rafe or take over grab the asana bring them back start using those yeah he he was putting them on ice so who knows how long yeah. they were gonna be uh like that for mm-hmm. but i don't know so anyways, we get to, to uh, issue two. They start off at Korriban, which is, is kind of cool. Uh, what did you think of that whole scene? Uh, well, there's a bit of a connection with the whole Bass Castle thing where Cedrus, for some stupid reason, had made a Darth Vader statue that oh, Palpatine right. was like, hey, hey don't. That guy that threw me down epic. a pit. This is, <laughs> this is not what we're about here. And then he gets to, uh, Palpatine gets to Korriban, and all the Sith Lords are like, hey, uh. Hey, Shivy buddy, you uh, you gonna sit here for a while with us? You gonna <laughs> stop doing your dumb shit and just sit on your throne here and be be a regular guy? Like, no, no, I will <laughs> live forever. And they were like, yeah, just fu- just fucking give it to him. Like, okay, don't come hang then. <laughs> we don't want to talk to you anyways. It's fine, you you won't get a sweet cat statue like the rest of us. Me and the boys are gonna head down to Marco Ragnos's later for some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> you got a new pool table installed <laughs> <laughs> which is the one um, that was like all that was uh repenting was that ajunta paul yeah i think so he's not invited yeah no i do like how that one says uh the doomed flesh you wear has yielded to necrosis <laughs> it's like get wrecked scrub <laughs> <laughs> i want to see some sith rap battles now saved. yeah true uh the sith I mean, they're kind of they're kind of spooky, I guess. Too yeah. is so. Is this? Uh, do we get a name for this one? Because I feel like this is basically supposed to be what becomes like Marco Ragnos. I don't think we get any names here. Um, just yeah, they're just called Ancients of the Dark yeah. Side. Maybe in the uh, source book, I'm not sure though. Because it seems to me like this is the guy who is meant to be Ragnos, and then mm-hmm. Ragnos kind of becomes like the. Speaking for the ancient Sith spokesperson, he's like the the leader of the Sith Homeowners Association on Korriban. It's like, uh, yeah, Palpatine, we have no uh, in the wrong zone for this kind of living forever thing. So if you'd like to just come and die. does he speak to Bane as well? Uh, Ragnos doesn't doesn't Bane speak to some of them? Well, there's I know he the speaks to, like Revan, doesn't he? Or like no, there's the one the of cut scene from uh from. TCW where Bane and Revan. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm speak- back in the the Bane trilogy. Oh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. He does, does he speak think- to some old ones, but I don't know. Because hmm. I remember, I remember he he finds like a holocron of Revan's, but I thought he spoke to some Sith too. Um, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I do find it. I just I don't know. I just find it kind of funny that's all. Uh, sorry, Andron of all places that they run to. Just kind of random. <laughs> yeah. Well, at that point, it wasn't random. It was just this new place yeah. they made up to run to. But now it's like, yeah. of course, he'd know about on 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 such a <laughs> it's a major thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Return we get, to the eclipse too. We get um a couple of shots of something we don't usually get in Star Wars, which is Leia or C three PO reading a book, like an actual real life book with hmm. pages and paper epic um yeah c3 is looking a little yoked i'm not gonna lie like he's looking like he's been hitting the weights <laughs> it's like when i saw star wars explained um 
<laughs> recently at uh or i guess it was in the summer in anaheim and that, that dude's been getting quietly pretty jacked and i was like whoa that's how i felt when i saw c-3po in this cutscene. Like he's looking over and like his shoulders are looking like like he's been doing some he's been working out so are you saying that alex the first and only guest so far on tap calf transmissions <laughs> is secretly c-3po I didn't say secretly, no. <laughs> you did say secretly getting jacked. Yes. So that's different. Okay. Yeah. Um and then kind of weird like there's one scene that I think really shows just how different like canon and the canon sequel trilogy, which had Palpatine going back and this is, and that's when Leia kind of like mind fucks Palpatine from across the galaxy. <laughs> I don't really know exactly what she's doing, but just like it says it's a sudden disturbance in the forest, but it looks like he's being like, I don't know if that's supposed to like represent his spidey senses going off uh, or if he's being like physically harmed by something. Yeah, he might just emit electricity whenever he's disturbed in <laughs> any way. God, no one is sneaking up or playing a prank on him. It's like, last time we played a prank on Palpatine, Kevin fucking died. <laughs> Classic Kevin. <laughs> Sounds like a total um, Kevin move. Yeah. Then, of course, Palpatine, uh, he actually finds the Millennium Falcon in which they're in, and they do the old... Uh, tractor well, beam it, shuffle? It, the tractor beam shuffle, and then a modified version of the trick they do in Empire Strikes Back, where they kind of just stick themselves to the back of the ship and uh, pretend to run away. Yeah, they uh, they were already stuck to the back of a rebel ship in this, uh, in this issue, mm -hmm. or in uh, issue one. So mm -hmm. they're they're just sticking with what they know here. Yeah. Although that was probably like a friendly stick, like uh you know, we're just There's no such thing as a friendly stick. Like they're we're all just kind of jerks. That's true. Oh, but uh, this guy, he the Eclipse 2's captain gets immediately killed uh for <laughs> Well, does he? Cuz he's ready to die. Well, he he's getting choked out on the next page, isn't he? My apple, um, I failed you. Ay. Oh, I yeah. Think the, I think the implication there is that he's dying, not he's just like getting strangulated so that Palpatine can get off no, or something. Right. Which maybe <laughs> maybe that's what's going on. Yeah. Like, I don't okay. want to shame, like, if that's what they're both into. Sorry, yeah. I was thinking of the wrong. Um... Isn't there another scene where somebody's yeah. like, I'm ready to die? I'm ready to die. Yeah, I'm I'm, I was... Slow your roll there, buddy. We're, we're still like, figuring don't it out. Don't worry, bud. It's all good. <laughs> You owned up to your mistake. That's what that's what Palpatine respects. <laughs> uh, and then there's yeah, there's a scene where uh, where Vima's in the cockpit of the Falcon. I was like, holy shit! How did Palpatine get in there? <laughs> so I guess Chewie evades ties. Vima de, uh, Debota does her Jedi work. I was like, oh my god! How did he get in there? I was like, oh, all right. Someone should tell them. <laughs> guys, guys, guys! He's right there. <laughs> She tries um, to tell him, like, yeah, I'm here. We're going to fly away. It's like, no, Palpatine immediately sees through that. Like, hey, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. And we get uh, the next page here. Uh, we get the, the aircraft carrier, but we also get in the background a an iron. Is an iron like an ironing board? The The iron that goes on the ironing board. Isn't that the ship from? Isn't that it looks like Brand's, Brands. Brands ships. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I, I don't know that it actually be. is, but it looks a so. lot like it because it, it's in the the battle as well. Um, oh, is it? I didn't notice. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, if you'd watch my battle breakdown that I did about two years ago, you'd know that. I yeah. I, I don't think I've watched any of your videos. Yeah, they're they're, they're yeah, honestly not that true. good. I, I don't remember every every second of an X X Heart Ladder video. So Yeah, there's there's one scene right after uh, I was scrolling the entire time. I don't, I don't know if you guys could hear that the slow uh, scroll, but yeah, there's one scene at the end where you can kind of see the yeah uh, mm. the ship and, there by the eclipse. And I, I know there's going to be people that are thinking it's Eckhart's ladder. I I that was just a joke about some something one of our friends says, and I I I don't want people to be angry at me on the internet. Well, that's okay. I watch every X Heart Ladder video. So a friend is a really strong word. Uh, there's an employee of one of us and a coworker <laughs> of the other. 
<laughs> um, so they they kind of launch the battle really suddenly as well. They're like they have an idea and they're like, "Fuck it, we'll do it live." Yeah. Huh. And they're like, "We're not going to try to defeat Palpatine. We're going to try to capture him." Maybe like, we can convince him to join the Jedi Order. <laughs> like they willingly will kill anybody. Like guards that are standing in front of Palpatine, they'll slaughter them like no problem. Um, yeah, random stormtroopers slaughter Palpatine. We'll put him in a fucking Jedi cage. Yeah, like he's in the middle, literally in the act of trying to get Anakin. He's still trying to get Anakin. He's not restrained in any way. It looks like mm-hmm. no, wait, Han, you can't shoot him. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes. Yes, Han, well, you no, can I, shoot I, him. I think that was because Luke knew that he would hop spirits. No, there there was also just... He was oh, trying to get him to repent in one of the scenes. He's like, I accept your surrender. And I was like, <laughs> no. On behalf of the New Republic. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> That's how you want to do this. <laughs> um, The space battle is kind of weird, though, because it's really small scale, especially compared with what we get in like the other books. The Eclipse doesn't have an escort fleet like it usually does, or like the Eclipse 1 uh, usually did. The Rebels, which have been shown to have a pretty large fleet, kind of just jump in a few ships. They're more like bothering it than... I mean, they're, they aren't trying to destroy it, to be fair. Um, but just kind of disappointing for a final battle. Well, yeah, it's just uh, it's just a distraction so that, 3P, or so that R2 can go and mm-hmm. uh, blow it all up at Biss. So mm-hmm. they're and, jacking uh, in. Did Luke have his blue lightsaber in all of these uh, comics? Because I noticed he does now. Uh, I mean, it's kind of unclear. And, and, and Dark Empire is so stylized that you can't really tell. But yeah, the I colors I I think it was they're often usually like just white. white. Yeah, so it's but hard this, to tell. This time it's specifically blue. So I'm sure there's a uh, Wikipedia article on. Luke's Dark Empire blue lightsaber. <laughs> well, maybe he switched back from it's the green after cool. he was the. Uh, well, Mara has and he no never problem. gave out. Uh, well, he just never gave up his robes. And he just oh, the new one. OK. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it doesn't, but sure. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we, actually, we, they find them in the pit on uh, yeah, Anosis we as find, well. Yeah, they so do find he's pit, probably using so. one of those for some reason. Yeah. When they all just turn them on, it's like, hey, Luke, good thing these all work. Like, yeah. Good job. <laughs> I mean, they might explode, but <laughs> why not? Palpatine I, I do does love... have one moment of badassery in this where he just annihilates Rafe in three seconds flat. Yeah. So... Oh, yeah. He's not only Rafe, but uh, he also... He eats Leia uh, out of the way. Yeah, and he he brand. kills um, Empatageo's brand basically in one shot, just like... Yeah, not even a problem. It's, it's I do a love pretty how... disturbing image there of like him bleeding out on the floor. Like I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better when you uh, hear it in the uh, in the audio production because it's like, "Don't worry, I am fine." <laughs> <laughs> Why would he have a voice... droid voice? <laughs> he just does. Well, his, his mouth is covered, so he's got like a. Mm. Is it usually? Is it always though? I don't think it's always yeah, covered. Yeah, because his little his nose like shows. His yeah, nose but I think when he that. leans up, you can see his. Oh no, never mind. I'm just thinking of the the clip on uh on his thing. Just looks like his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do love how uh, my bad how Palpatine manages to sneak in to the nursery. <laughs> it's like we got this old man. Let's not. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> Leia's just got the kid just sitting right next to the edge on this uh, couch. She doesn't seem too concerned. She already got her uh, her pregnancy or her pre-pregnancy body back. She's been doing um, uh, beach body fitness. Beach body uh, she, on demand. Yeah, even guys, even if you're fighting a galactic war, thirty minutes a day with Tony Horton is all you need. <laughs> Leia can do it. You can do it. I prefer That's to spend that time with Tim Horton. So yoked as well. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, then he comes in, he, uh, I mean, he could, probably could have just muscled his way in there or gotten his guards to do so, but we know that Sheev likes pretending to be old and helpless, because he does that in Dark Empire 1 as well. So um, wouldn't, wouldn't the, uh, 
the emperor be a kind of recognizable person? And Lady Kira's Especially like, in hmm. old man form. We know but... we know you're coming here to take Anakin. I'm looking for some old wrinkly dude. You look exactly like the Galactic Emperor. You want to see Anakin. You know what? <laughs> Let's take you in and see how this goes. Yeah, like, you know Leia is just fucking fuming. <laughs> like, Leia, like, I know like old I man insists on, like, meeting you. I know you asked not to be, like, disturbed, but he seems so gentle and kind. <laughs> Leia's take like... to your baby. <laughs> I'm most anxious to meet your children. Like, that's... As a father? If, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like anybody over the age of seven saying that to me. You've never, like, come home from the grocery store or something like, hey, Kelsey, I found I found this this old dude who's very insistent on meeting our son. I would yeah, he also like smells like death, um, and he electrocuted three people on the way home, but... <laughs> and he's got these armed guards. Look at these lightsabers, Leia. They could be Jedi, too. On the plus side, we got to park in the elderly section, which is pretty rare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just it's so bizarre, like, how just rushed this all is. Well, Palpatine like, looks... Uh, is that Guy Fieri? <laughs> where uh the page uh like the the panel right under leia and 3po getting shocked there's palpatine like leaning back and pointing and he's being held up by his two aides and one is like i think it might be guy fieri (laughs) the one facing the camera uh i can see it oh isn't that his doctor is that the wellness guy yeah because doesn't he have a little uh yeah, because he's got a little... Uh, yeah, because the next one you can see, he, he gives him some good advice. Excellency, please, you're killing yourself. Mm. Um, also, that baby would be hella dead because he shocks the shit out of his 3PO, and 3PO's... Being held by... Thing, it, yeah. And he's holding the baby. <laughs> yeah, babies and electricity do not mix. Is this how Anakin gets all of his weird powers? It could be. Like, have we ever... That's the lore Sat down to talk about that, how Anakin has those weird powers, uh, and he's just he's kind of a strange kid, uh, mm-hmm. very powerful with that can do very weird stuff and has these weird skills. Is it because he got electrocuted and was going to be possessed as a baby? <laughs> it could be. He almost got taken to Flavor Town, as someone in the chat says. <laughs> <laughs> I do like how you can tell this was clearly written by someone who's a m- children. Children, get behind mama. <laughs> and then she just mind blasts Palpatine. <laughs> like, how about three PO? Like, children run out of this room, or just like I don't know. Just, just made me chuckle because there's a big problem of like nobody moves the children away from the fucking Sith demon. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's like even when they like so like. Palpatine grabs them and then the old lady or sorry not the old lady Palpatine grabs them and then the uh, the Onderanian woman grabs grabs Anakin back and then she just doesn't go very far yeah, she's just like she's she's entirely clueless to what's going on like evil old man how dare you like are you shocked at this point did yeah. you not realize that this is Palpatine but like I'll give you a pass on letting him in which I shouldn't mm-hmm. but at this point like come on yeah, and then like Leia comes in, or sorry, Luke comes in, and Potajeo's brand comes in. The whole fucking squad rolls up. And Leia's just still there with the baby, just like just leave, like get away from this fucking evil, nasty old man, and just like let your husband just shoot him in the fucking back, like he wants to. Yeah. And Han MVP here shoots Palpatine. <laughs> Well, I guess Brand MVP because he dies to take his soul in or whatever. The fact that Han Solo shoots Palpatine though is just like It's very it's I think it's supposed to be like the whole Indiana Jones thing with the whip yeah. battle where it was supposed to yeah. be a whole deal and they're like, No, just fucking shoot him. But yes, do that. <laughs> He's not holding a lightsaber. I do like how uh he says, Oh, the Corellian has killed me. You know, I wonder if it was like Han has like one of those anime moments where like his cheeks go- get a little rosy and he's like, oh, he knows him from Corellia. Yeah, <laughs> that is weird. It's like <laughs> you'd be more likely to know him as Han Solo than as the Corellian. Yeah. Unless it's just that vest is just what everyone on Corellia wears, which it's I think Garmbell Iblis kinda ha- hammers it's home that everyone has it. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's like, the man with the, oh, those are blood stripes. It makes so much more sense now. <laughs> I wanted to retire there. <laughs> Beautiful place. Uh, um, yeah, my, my notes for this, for this, uh, for this comic are funny. Um, owning the Skywalker, because I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah, one thing I meant to mention it's kind of funny how well one thing i do like about this comic is how palpatine like felt like he had ownership over anakin um like anakin skywalker so it is kind of like appropriate in a way that he literally is trying to dominate you know the next skywalker the fact yeah. that it's, his name is anakin is maybe a little too on the point but that's fine um and can you imagine having to fucking babysit baby Sheev? <laughs> I would be weak for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Then I would be weirdly horny. <laughs> <laughs> Do not let me on MSN. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to go through like Sith school. <laughs> There's a Palpatine high school <laughs> anime series. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I just... There's got to be better options because, like, someone's going to just stab you, dude. Yeah. Like, is he fully conscious inside a baby's body? Like, that would be, that'd be hell. At least. I'm pretty sure he is. Like, yeah. it's his spirit. That's what they're doing. Yeah. And, like, we just know Carnor would have just killed just him. Stabbed him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. E entering the child, don't like that. <laughs> Don't like that at all. <laughs> um, That's disgusting. Yeah, I do like unnoticed the disabled king of Ganath regains mental control over his prosthetic repulsors and then Impotijejo's brand lunges out for Han and Leia's child, shielding him from Palpatine's evil spirit um, and basically saving the day. Yeah, good job, Impotijejo. I, I like that for him. Well, it doesn't end well for him. And you can see the blood like pooling inside of his metal case. <laughs> Somebody please open the trap door. It's getting <laughs> disgusting in here. <laughs> also, the fact that Jaden and Jason saw that like happen, like no wonder they both get, they're both pretty fucked up. Um, Jaina spends like a, a year in a fucking bug orgy. Uh, or sorry, Jaina spends a year in a bug orgy. Jason does some stuff of lesser evil. Um, <laughs> wait, what? Lesser evil than the bug orgy or than Palpatine? Uh, I meant the bug orgy. I was just joking. Um, but no wonder things get so messed up for them based on what they've seen already. Dr. Eggman and Palpatine. Oh, I see. I see his ship now. Yeah. That's, yeah. There's that. It's hiding yeah. under the eclipse. That's a good place to be. Yeah. I'm surprised it sure. doesn't blow up. And this is where yeah. in the last, uh, what, two, three pages of the of the thing where they realize, oh, wait, there's still two giant super weapons that we have to deal with. Let's fly one into the other one. Yeah. Like, don't worry. We got a really stupid way out of this. <laughs> um, what do you what do you think of the drag like this? The the sim the ending of this is actually pretty similar to the ending of episode nine where it's like the spirit of all jedi are coming together to defeat this great evil and this it's like yeah we're gonna send you to hell and hold you there and keep you there um and this and, and then in episode nine it's like literally she's being powered by um jedi around the galaxy throughout time very similar really in the end any thoughts on that mm. The Force Spirit stuff is always weird to me, mm. and yeah, yeah, I I don't love it in either position. Uh, I think I like it better in Episode Nine, though. Yeah, personally, I like I do like the de decrepifying Palpatine more than I like the clones. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do think that Rise of Skywalker ends up being uh closer to. Uh, Dark Empire one and a lot of that, which is mm -hmm. better. But yeah. I do th I I prefer Dark Empire one to Rise of Skywalker, 
mm-hmm. but I also prefer Rise of Skywalker to Dark Empire 2 and Dark Empire. I'd, I'd agree with that, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, there's... I like the decrepit Palpatine too. I just wish they would have been... I said this before, but I wish they would have been more dramatic with it. Like, I would have liked to see Palpatine in episode 9, like, literally, like, falling apart. Like, he's held together by machines. He's, like, you know, like, missing... Like, kind of Snoke-like in episode, se- in episode 7, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe they could have tied it in with, oh, Palpatine was testing ways to, I don't know, I don't know regenerate himself or some bullshit. Um, but yeah, like I was hoping because the script for or the the plot for episode nine leaked like fucking six months in advance, and of course I read it. So I, I was hoping that he would look like really like disgusting and like kind of like his like the purest evil version of himself. And it's just like no, he's got cataracts now, which is like a real issue people deal with. So not a very epic thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That that's the the consequences of the dark side cataracts. Yeah, yeah. Which is I don't know. It's kind of like ableist in my opinion, but. Well, I like the the hand thing. That's one of my favorite yeah. shots in the movie. Is his hands like degenerating and kind of reforming? Degener- mm-hmm. But but yeah. So this is uh, gonna sound weird, but I would have liked if the if his entire body was like his yeah hand, like his, his hand is there, but he's like missing fingers and shit. And that was like perfect. Like if he had been missing like half a face or something. Yeah. And you can do that without it being too disturbing Graphic, for kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It did like get into kind of Darth Sion territory. I don't think it's a, a huge issue. Yeah. No, I uh, agree. That that's yeah. a good that's a good example. Uh, Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion probably scared me more. And I was when did. Like that legitimately scared me when I played the game the first time. I was not... six, was it? For yeah, so I, was, I was fourteen, and <clears throat> I found that to be pretty scary. <laughs> I I'm so I I just finished a playthrough of Knights of the Old Republic, which uh, mm-hmm. you uh, guest starred in for the second last stream for a bit, mm-hmm. and I'm really looking forward to Kotor too because I love Kreia. Just yeah, she's uh, great. the the kind of elements of the Force that the game goes into. And kind of the philosophy of everything, especially in the wake of like the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War and mm-hmm. all that. I I just love the themes of that story, even if like there's yeah. parts where uh, the game was clearly rushed and stuff. But there's just so mm-hmm. many elements of that that I really love. But that's why it's such a shame we never got to see Kodor 3. And in my opinion, the isn't a uh, isn't a, a true sequel. Mm hmm. Because it sounds like the idea they had for Kodor 3 is going to be pretty cool with like, you know, going, like going into the unknown regions and whatnot. But yeah, like that whole triumvirate is really creepy because they're not really like, because Star Wars is a problem with like, how do you make something more evil than Palpatine, like in order to make it as interesting or more interesting than the original trilogy? And usually they just make the the enemy edgy and they don't usually do a good job of upping the stakes but with the like triumvirate in Kodor 2 it's creepy and it's scary because like Kreia is so like she's more like realistically dark and it's like Mm -hmm. she's she's hard to understand and she's like bringing these aspects of the force that like you said aren't really addressed in other places and it's like it's weird and it's mysterious and then Nihilus is kind of like the same thing and Scion is just like creepy yeah, um, until so. Scion, uh, like, there's a point where Scion goes a little bit too far towards, like, just, oh, this is kind of, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, hon. But, uh, yeah. but like, okay. I, at the same time of being, like, scared of Nihilus and Scion, through the conversations with Kreia and everything, you start talking about, like, the Jedi Order, and the when you're hunting down the Jedi Masters, it's like, oh, these guys were kind of dicks. And mm-hmm. there's an element of, like, Feel, like you're sympathizing with the choices Darth Revan made, not just uh, as mm-hmm. like the redeemed character from KOTOR 1, but like understanding mm-hmm. how he got to the point of being Darth Revan as Kray is explaining that and also kind of explaining like this is what happened to Nihilus and Scion. This is why they are how they are. So it's a mix of being scared, but also uh, if not sympathy, then some level of empathy for them. Mm-hmm. And I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, but the yeah, 
It's just weird because Kodor one is such like tone wise. It's such a traditional Star Wars story. Like it's it's a it's an adventure. There's pretty clear good and bad, uh, even though like, there is nuance to it. But, you know, it's it's a space opera. You go planet hopping. Um, it, it's very like it feels like Star Wars. Like when you're on Terrace, it feels like Star Wars. But like Kodor 2 is completely different. It's like it's been a, a long time since I played it. So I'll probably wait until you do your playthrough and then do one myself because mm-hmm. I've been meaning to as well. But like it's got a very kind of at least from what I remember, because it's been years since I've played it. It's got kind of like a. To me, it has like a dark, almost like melancholy uh, overtone to it that like you don't really see in the original trilogy, for example. Yeah, and it it, it actually does something that I really like that Star Wars often has trouble with, which is like it's not even that it's justifying Kreia and Nihilus and Sion. It's mm-hmm. that it's explaining how they are, who they are, and when they're well, they are the bad guys. They're not just mm-hmm. evil McBad dude. Uh, mm. which like you you get a lot with Palpatine where Palpatine is just like the embodiment of sociopathic evil mm-hmm. and uh, like you get you get some of the good parts with Vader but then the prequels didn't really get the transformation yeah. the way that I would have liked it and that's like I've mentioned a lot but that's why I like Jason Solo's turn because yeah. it was somewhat unintentional so you kind of see him starting off as this very different character and the shit him and his family go through and what it leads to. Yeah. So it's not perfect, but it is that progression that you get. So mm-hmm. when he is a Sith Lord, you get extra dimensions to it. Yeah. Uh, and even though we're only introduced to Kreia, Nilus, and Sion as those people, you kind of get that background and understand how they got to where they were. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, we're, we've very much digressed from Empire's End. So... It's just funny, the last things I'll say, it's just funny how, like, most of the spooky, like, a lot of the spooky backstory you learn, like, literally just standing in a room on the Ebon Hawk. I think it's, like, the hyperdrive room talking to yeah. Kraya about it. Uh, and also, I remember when I was a kid, that scene where you're fighting uh, her for the final battle, and she starts force-wielding the lightsabers, I just fucking turned my game off. I was like, nah. <laughs> really? You didn't like that? No, I liked it. I was just like, I had just struggled to like, because I think you have to fight her first form first. Mm-hmm. And I was playing on hard and I was like, probably did not understand like the underlying RPG mechanics. I only just barely managed to beat her first form with like yeah. med pack scumming and shit. So when she started fucking swinging her lightsabers off or lightsabers around, I just fucking turned my game off. <laughs> I really, I ever since later. I saw that, uh, saw Kraya doing that, I wanted to see someone do something like that in the movies. Or even if like Yoda had turned out to fight like that with his lightsaber rather than flipping around the room, if it had been more like yeah, some sort of force. If if we have to see Yoda fight, I would have preferred like more force reliant stuff mm. from him. But even if it's not like yeah. floating three lightsabers around himself, that might have been a bit much. But I, I like he the does basic something concept. like that. Uh, in he does something like that when they go to um, Ilum in the Clone Wars. But yeah, never mm. quite like fighting. But yeah, uh, all those stories are way better than uh, Empire's End, and <laughs> they blow up the, the they they somehow manage to not only they do they destroy the the eclipse, they destroy the galaxy gun, and the galaxy gun loosens a final torpedo which destroys Biss and presumably most of the orbiting fleet. So they manage to take out all three final things, and then the last chapter just says, "Nice work, Chewie. Hang on, Rebs. I'm I'm taking us to jump speed." Uh, Chewy, Chewbacca roar, and it says, "Long live the New Republic," and that's where. It <laughs> yeah, like it, it just it was what I'm talking, what I was talking about before, where it's like it kind of feels unearned somehow, as if all this stuff wasn't planned, and yeah. uh, yeah, it it's just like oh, we forgot there's still the rest of the Empire and the uh the eclipse and the galaxy gun, and rather than even just saying this is something that'll be taken care of in another story, let's just blow it all up. Yeah. Yeah, pretty not epic way to end a, uh, a series. And just like with the the Cam Solisar thing where Luke was saying like, oh, is he still going to be alive? And I think there was a thing where Leia was thinking, oh, well, Vima is going to train my kids up to be Jedi. And the epilogue is like, <laughs> Vima did not grow up. Oh, actually, <laughs> no, it's it's the same paragraph. It's Leia's hope that Vima Dabota, who remembers the time when the Jedi were unequal in strength and wisdom, will live <laughs> to train Han and Leia's children in the ways of the Force. 
But during the victory celebration in the walled city of Isis, Vima mysteriously disappears. None of the Jedi are able to locate her, and it's not known if Vima is dead, whether she has found passage back to her old haunt on the spaceport moon of Nar Shadda. Wait, my version doesn't even have that. Oh, you don't have the epilogue? No. Should I it read the whole just... thing? No, I'll just read it later. But it literally just ends with long live the new Republic, <laughs> and that's the fucking end. I just love the way you said that. No. <laughs> It's funny because the uh, the the audio production does have another scene where they're on their what they're like at the Millennium Falcon's uh, chess table and they're just like shooting the shit. And uh, the last scene in that is the Emperor is gone and we've destroyed his dark emperor his dark empire forever. Epic. <laughs> but this epilogue talks about how uh, uh, there's going to be Imperial warlords who are going to take up the fight. and uh, But Palpatine's dead. and The, the Jedi are going to come back. And uh, mm-hmm. the leaders of the Rebellion gather on the planet Onderon as guests of Modon Kira and his warrior clan. Etc, etc. Right. May the Force be with you. Tom Vetch. Thanks, Tom. Really wrap that one up very nicely. Again, just comparing it to... Um, comparing it to... Dark Empire 1? no Thrawn trilogy like the way that that book sets up it's just not even close yeah um, but yeah that that's our our general thoughts um we purposely kind of went through this one pretty quickly because it's only two issues we don't want to be overly negative or talk about anything else is there anything you'd like to add to kind of sum up your thoughts on not only the the issues but the uh, the entire Dark Empire experience uh Dark Empire one was really good I liked it I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't like the other two as much, but I really like Dark Empire 1. So I'm going to focus on that. Good job with Dark Empire 1. Yeah, I, I'm i disappointed because I liked them a lot less than I remembered. Because um, I'd, you know, I'd read them all and I would go back and read certain aspects for certain videos, but reading them all kind of concurrently like this really points out the flaws in the, the latter two um comics so i'll I'll leave it at that as well um shall we do some questions before we go we got i think uh, five emails maybe yeah we got four. a couple emails to to read through here uh and if uh, people want to do some questions in the chat if you have any questions for us for either this episode uh well for this episode in the chat but if you have any questions for this episode while listening or for our next episode we are going to be talking about jedi Mm. search in two weeks that one's going to be over on uh, my channel to start off Mm -hmm. with you can email us at tapcaftransmissions at Uh, Mm gmail.com that's t-a-p-c-a-f transmissions at gmail.com or Mm -hmm. you can follow us now on twitter at tapcaf podcast i believe Mm -hmm. and uh tweet at us there so yeah uh, so the first email we have, I think, is from Joel, who says, Hey, Tapcaf, two- short question, does Empire's and confirmed Sidious was a Sith, or was that the or was that Phantom Menace? Uh, not sure. I, I, I think it counts as confirming he was a Sith with the whole Korriban thing. And- oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I guess, right, because I guess that's a that sounds like a weird question in, like now, but I guess if you think about it, He's often talked about as a dark Jedi, like in... Yeah. Because, like, with yeah. the Thrawn trilogy, which was made concurrently, it was, like, Darth mm-hmm. Vader was the Lord of the Sith, and there was still the yeah. question of what the Sith are, and the Sith mm-hmm. were going to be the Nogri. Uh, so it was a very open thing of, like, was Palpatine also a Sith? Mm-hmm. And I think Dark Empire, uh, especially with that scene on Korriban, really does take the stance of, like, yes, Palpatine is 100% Sith. Right. Yeah. Um. So gr- that's actually... A, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and then long question, uh, the new canon takes a lot of concepts from the old EU and retools them to fit new canon style. Sequel trilogy is Dark Empire mixed with Fate of the Jedi. I, I'd agree with that. What are some ideas that you'd like to see added in the canon if retooled? Uh, how would you, for example, how would you retool the Old Republic to not essentially just be Sith War of the Week, make it a bit co- cohesive? Um, and yeah, do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, to, to a certain extent, I do, I don't actually have a problem with the, the KOTOR era being kind of Sith of the week because there, there is this kind of, uh, theme in the prequel and 
a little bit in the post and or stuff or the the original trilogy Mm -hmm. of it being like the Sith were this greater thing before and they're getting their revenge as Maul's one line was basically about in the prequels. Yeah. Uh, So you get this hint of like the golden age of the Jedi and Sith fighting it out uh, in the ancient wars and all that. So I, I don't really want to lose that. I'd, I'd like to keep some elements of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that I want to go like full tour with that. Uh, But something closer to like the the new sith wars still being there or like periods mm-hmm. of conflict between them but we'll see what ultimately goes on with that uh so yeah i i wouldn't mind keeping that actually um yeah i'd like it to be less restrained i mean more restrained in the number of because i don't want yeah, there to be like that's that's fair but i would be cool with there being i think it'd be interesting to see a period where the sith like actually took over for a while i mean that did happen but it'd be cool to see it as more of a main story. Um, yeah, they, they that, called that the Galactic Empire. Yeah, I mean, like, open Sith Empire before yeah. the Rule of Two. Uh, anyway, great question. Uh, next we have Hans, who says, in my opinion, I'll, I'll just uh, shorten it. Uh, Do you think the new EU could benefit from taking more risks in introducing new villains that aren't Empire and First Order? Will that divide fans even more? I find the new EU to be quite boring because it feels like they aren't taking many risks. And yeah, I mean, to a degree, I agree with that. I think they've been really limited so far because they've been tying themselves into existing stories and being kind of conservative um, and not straying outside of the areas that have been kind of laid out pretty clearly. Um, But there do, as he also includes in the email, I think there does need to be more really compelling characters that can kind of carry stories on their own. He mentions Korin, Thrawn, and Zinj. Um... And yeah, I, I agree with all that. And I think now that the movies are over, they're planning this new Project Luminous thing, we will see some of that. I agree. Okay. Um, next we have another one from Joel. I will say, I do want to say just uh, as a general point, uh, no matter what comes out in either universe, it's always going to be... Co- you're never going to get something that comes yeah. out that's not controversial. It's very rare when it happens. Uh, mm-hmm. I think like Fallen Order and The Mandalorian are actually in the entire time I've been in the Star Wars fandom, the closest we've got yeah. to that. Because like the prequels were certainly not uncontroversial. Mm-hmm. Uh, KOTOR was another one that was uh, pretty universally like KOTOR, Republic yeah. Commando, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, and The Mandalorian are kind of the That's only funny ones where I would... I've been really disappointed by Republic Commando during my playthrough. It's so short. <laughs> yeah. It's short, but that meant it had very few places where it could have fucked up. But, like, I remember running the Thrawn's Revenge forums since, like, 2006. Mm -hmm. And first it was, like, uh, NJO ruined Star Wars. Then Darkness ruined Star Wars. Then Fate of the Jedi ruined Star Wars. Then Legacy ruined Star Wars. Then Fate of the Jedi ruined Star Wars. So. Uh, So we got another two by Joel that I'll try to summarize. Uh, The first is, let me see. Uh, have you ever read the fan novelization someone made for Dark Empire? I haven't. Uh, I'm guessing you haven't either. Uh, I'd probably consider checking that out. Um, this is a question we've had a lot in the chat. Um, so I'll, it's good that he asked. Yeah. Which do you think did the Palpatine return better, Dark Empire or Rise of Skywalker? I think we both kind of agreed that Dark. Well, you said you like him coming back in Rise of Skywalker more than a clone, right? Uh, well, I it's less more than a clone. I. I I'm fine with the clone in general. I'd like the the visuals of the decrepifying. Uh, and we, we did get a few questions here. Daigo Fish was asking about uh, the like the, the death of him as well. So we can probably loop all that together and just sort of talk about the general Palpatine return question. But uh, like my, my personal ranking overall does go what I said before of like Dark Empire 1, Rise of Skywalker, Dark Empire 2. <laughs> and Empire's mm-hmm. End together kind of down there where yeah. like the, the clones is a way to get like the original spirit transfer. Uh, I prefer that, but I do like the individual body trying to like sustain it after that. Yeah. Uh, then if you go the clone route, what you end up with is just like a disposable Palpatine. Like you just have a roll yeah. of Palpatines and he pulls one off and just fucking unkillable that kind of situation. And... and you end up with a literal pool of Palpatines in dark empire at one point. And yeah. I, I think that gets a bit too, a bit too strange. So I, I think there, there are certain things that I like about each one and dislike about each one. I, 
the the hurdle of getting the initial not dying from falling down that pit is a huge issue for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, like how he actually gets to Exegol. We don't know the yet. new canon, <laughs> which we don't know yet. But it, I, I feel like I'm always going to have a bit of a problem with that, at least a bit of a problem with that. Yeah. Uh, but once you get there, I do kind of like him trying to like have to keep that one going, and he needs that body rather mm-hmm. than like he's just pulling through bodies and eventually wants to take over Anakin. Yeah. I like this this Sith cultist stuff, I think, in episode nine is pretty cool. Uh, I like that the idea of Exegol as a planet is cool. I, I like the idea that he might have been looking for it while he was the Emperor. All that stuff's pretty cool. Um, regarding his death, I there are elements I like from both. I like the sacrifice of somebody that can kind of contain him. Um, I don't have a huge problem with him shocking himself to death it's just like i don't know it's just it, it, it's honestly basically they're they're both all he's all yeah. in to try to break her she's all in to try to defeat him and she's got all the jedi he's got all the sith the light like it doesn't really bother me um mm-hmm. yeah so yeah i i they're, they're both very different but very similar um but yeah, thanks for the, the question. Do you have anything else you'd like to address, or do you want me to read the last email? Yeah, yeah just just to kind of add on that. At a certain point, like I I don't love bringing Palpatine back that much in general. Like mm-hmm. I enjoyed it more in Dark Empire because I had like I thought it was a fun thing there. Yeah. But overall, I'd prefer if he just died falling down that pit in Episode Six. That would have been my yeah. ideal, like my fa- top Palpatine death for me. Episode six. Let's just, let's mm. stick with that one, please. <laughs> please just don't like don't don't bring him back again. He's dead. We're we're good with that, right? Yeah. At, at a certain and... point, it's just like it's splitting hairs of like which thing that you didn't like initially was the better way to do the thing that you think shouldn't have happened. It's like, are we? Mm. Is this really what this is going to turn into? Of like trying to find a way to shit on which of these two bad decisions you disliked yeah. more? It's like, come on. <laughs> And it's like, and like, even more on that is like when you, when I consider empires and his death there, I'm also kind of being influenced by the fact that he's already died like three times yeah. by this point, and that takes away from it. Um, but anyway, let's let's move on to the final question. Uh, this one is from Justin, who's emailed a few times. He says, or, and I keep so, telling you, you don't need to email Justin. You're on the show. That's a different Justin. That's not funny. Oh. Uh, he says, probably going to be the last questions for me till the Yuzhan Vaughn. Kind of rude, but no, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, he says, first, I hope you expunged Palpatine's spirit from your body, Corey, which I, you I, did. I think I did. Uh, he lives from some sort of essence transfer. Okay, he just explained some stuff about, uh, about Corey and Vitiate because we addressed that in a question. Um, do you think JJ had read Dark Empire and decided to try to model the sequel trilogy off of it, or is it just a coincidence? That's an interesting question. I don't um, think he read it. I think he was aware of the the general story of bringing Palpatine back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there were probably some other people who were more aware. Like, because there was, like, I'm pretty sure there was story group involvement. So uh, when they're getting ideas thrown back and forth, it would have been like, okay, well, these are the things that you can work with there. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, like, a lot of the people who are involved as the story group people are also... Uh, people who were involved in like the legend story so they would have been pretty intimately familiar with that so if jj came and said you know what we need to do is we need to have palpatine show up and if the story group's on board with that then they say okay well this is what that looked like here Mm -hmm. Uh, so i don't think or they they might have like if jj read it i think it was probably after he had already proposed bringing palpatine back Mm -hmm. uh that would be just my impression i've never asked him i don't know if anyone's ever asked him but to me based on like how JJ seems almost unwilling to like incorporate elements of the current EU. I kind of doubt that he had actually read it, but and the thing is a lot of the similarities too that people make to dark empire. Yes. Palpatine returning is obvious, but that's not necessarily a dark empire only thing. A lot of the actual similarities are actually things that come about in the expanded universe or in things like, um, you know, the visual guide, like the visual guide has a lot of the real similarities uh, to Dark Empire in there, like everything from the guards being named the same thing. Yeah. Um, and then like how the First Order was formed and all of that stuff. So a lot of that is actually kind of story group stuff or individual author stuff. That being said, the, the impact certainly can be felt 
Um, I, I kind of doubt personally that he's ever read it, but like you said, I'm sure he was aware and working with people who had. Yeah, and it's like when you start with the premise of like we're bringing back Palpatine and the idea of bringing back a villain like that is not unique to Star no. Wars. It's exactly. almost every franchise ever has done it at some point and some are built off the idea of evil McBad guy coming back like Harry Potter mm-hmm. uh, because I need to make sure I'm contractually obligated to bring up Harry Potter every episode. Yeah. But um, when you start with the premise of like Palpatine is coming back, then there are certain things that you do end up with it just being like kind of convergent rather than uh Mm -hmm. coming from the same point where it's like okay ships with super lasers that's gonna happen if you're gonna do that and they went like way the wrong direction in my opinion with the rise of skywalker with that Uh, i do prefer super laser in the comics yeah i prefer the the eclipse with all of its extra information added over the Mm -hmm. fleet of zeistans but you have that you have the four storm which i really liked visually because it was like this throwback to uh, mm-hmm. what we knew from Dark Empire, but it was also probably not intentionally referenced that. It's just like, you have Palpatine, you have him going like just super totally. mode. Yeah, He's, You're going to see some lightning happen is what the guy does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, the, the storm itself, it, it's similar in a basic sense, but mm-hmm. really there's a lot that's different. Like he doesn't uh, destroy his own fleet with it, really. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the storm is not really like an electrical storm either. Um, in it's it's like a it's more like yeah, a, it was the like windy kind of storm. Yeah, it was it was different in it wasn't um, force lightning. But really, the idea of bringing Palpatine back is the obvious choice because he is the one connecting evil throughout the entire prequels and original trilogy. Really, um, so yeah, to. to to attribute that to Dark Empire, I think, is probably giving Dark Empire a little too much credit. Um, but when you start putting everything together, oh man, like there's so so much similar, so much um, that's similar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, interesting question. Uh, it's hard to say. Maybe in 20 years when we get the the uh, real breakdown of what happened, we'll know. But until then, I think we can only guess. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for this breakdown or thanks for joining us for the breakdown of the Dark Empire series. I will say, Corey, we might have to move next episode back one week because that's when Charlie's coming down to visit. And I think I might lose my ability to read just by him being. um, (laughs) No, that's fair. Uh, Mm -hmm. so it'll probably be the 12th then is what we're going to be aiming for. He was trying to get me to come too. Uh, yeah, but thinking about it. Well, I was thinking about it. This is people will have no idea what we're talking about. Most of the people listening, but, Mm -hmm. or I I guess they understand the idea of like me going to your house. Uh, Mm -hmm. but I had a flight tracker set up for when Charlie was originally saying he was going to go up for those dates. It's like, okay, if he does, then I'll probably be able to. Uh, Because it was Mm like $250. Like, okay, this is doable. But then he Mm -hmm. tells me like yesterday that he was getting the tickets. And the flight tracker was already putting it up at $550. And then I checked this morning. It's up to $680. like, no, I'm not not doing that now. (laughs) Yeah, You need to be faster with this, Charlie. (laughs) He's like, you didn't tell me I could order it yet. I was like, I'm not your mom. (laughs) You've literally been saying every time I've heard you talk about it for the last two months, (laughs) order them in the morning. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk tomorrow. And then he just yeah. does it. Anyway, guys, um, if you want to hear more of this bullshit, we will be streaming over on uh, X2 after this. Uh, we'll be playing some Burial Cart at about an hour from now. Uh, so if you guys want to stop by, uh, you can join us there. Um, otherwise, keep an eye open. Uh, read, start reading the Jedi Academy trilogy. Uh, Jedi Search is book one. So... Read that. Send all your questions, as always, to tapcaptransmissions at gmail.com. Follow our new uh, Twitter account, which have you been active on? I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything with it yet, no. Yeah, it'll be active soon enough. Yeah. Uh, And yeah, that's that's all for me. Anything you want to add before we head out? Uh, No, I just really enjoyed Dark Empire 1, and I want to focus on that. So yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's have a round of applause for Dark Empire 1. Good night, everyone. Good night.